Shine a light on London politics is the Conservative mayoral candidate for London Mayor, who's taking on Sadiq Khan, Suzanne Hall. Uh, London-wide Assembly member since 2017, Suzanne replaced fellow firebrand Conservative councillor Kemi Badenoch and has since been re-elected to the Assembly in 2021. A small businesswoman by trade, she spent the last decade working on local councils seeking to improve the lives of her constituents and now she faces her biggest challenge yet, knocking out Sadiq Khan to become London mayor, following in the footsteps of former Prime Minister Boris Johnson. And while Paul So Khan looks likely to hang on, do not discount Suzanne Hall. I'm thrilled to say that Suzanne joins me now in the studio. Suzanne, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Well, no, listen, let, let's get straight in there. What made you decide to want to go for trying to be London mayor? Well, just let's look at the state of London. Mm. At the I mean, we've got the most beautiful city in the world. Uh, the Mayor of London is responsible for the police and mm. our police are in special measures for the first time ever. Uh, also responsible for TFL, which is Transport for London. Just look at the states of both of our streets and the, everything's gridlocked. Um, nothing but trouble on the trains, etc, etc. And housing, and he hasn't built enough houses. He's been there long enough to have made a difference to those things. Mm. So I want to replace him and I want to put things right. Looking forward, we must look forward to a much more positive London and I will bring that. So looking at some of the things that have happened, so last month, August wasn't it? God, it feels like everything's going so, so quickly. <laughs> we had Notting Hill Carnival. Um, yep. There were eight Stabbing, 75 police uh, were hurt, open drug use. Um, we saw people running through the streets with machetes. Um, what's your plan? Because um, when um, you, David Lammy, when you said that Carnival was dangerous, he said that you, that was offensive. Um, and in fact, his words were, and I know we've got a slate of it, David Lammy said that your comments uh, for someone running to be London mayor uh, are offensive. And he felt that that, uh, that it would be just, uh, and does not, you do not share the values, London's values. Why should it be offensive mm. to say that such a successful event like the Notting Hill Carnival sh could be looked at to be put in a place that would make it safer mm. for everybody that goes? It's a victim of its own success. People enjoy going there, but the roads that they are in, it's outgrown those roads. Mm. And it, I, I'm just saying that I think the organisers should look to other possibilities. That's all I said. Uh, David Lammy seems to take offence at anything that comes out of my mouth. I just ignore it because... Why should I not want Londoners to feel safer? Mm, because I would, I'm inclined to agree with you. I wrote a piece in the Daily Mail about Carnival and I was called all sorts of names. Mm. Just to simply pointing out that I am frightened to go to Notting Hill Carnival. Mm. I won't go. Mm. I've seen what happened and, and last, the last one I saw, which was the one we just had, uh, there was a shot of at least eight youths running through the streets, each of them with individual machetes. machetes. Just went, yeah. I'm like, I'm not going there. No, I, I don't blame you. And you wouldn't want your children going there. You would, it, it could be so much safer somewhere else. Mm. And more and more people say to me they don't want to go. Having said that, the numbers are there. Mm. But the type of crimes that everybody says, oh, well, the amount of people that are there to the amount of crimes, it's the normal average. It's the... Um, it's the seriousness of those crimes that the uh, commissioner himself said he was concerned about. So it's not being racist, as I've been called, for saying that we should look about it moving. It's me just saying, let's try and keep Londoners safer. And while we're talking about it, the police officers that have to police this mm. because they don't go through choice. They go because they have to. And every year they put themselves in danger. Surely we should be looking at a different way. Well, uh, well I suggested Hyde Park. At least then you could police people and make sure they're not going in with machetes. Yes, I absolutely. That, I don't know why that would be such a terrible suggestion. Uh, now, of course, uh, Sadiq Khan uh, recently announced his London policing board. Um, um, what are your views on that? Because he had one guy there, Sace Holmes Lewis. Now, he's one of the board members that was appointed by Khan. And um, actually, he, he, he liked an abusive tweet about me, which I didn't particularly think was very nice. Somebody had been nasty about me, saying, hilarious, I wrote a piece about the global majority, is about as sinister, as insulting as an ethnic minority or bane. You've got to be a super dunce to, to not see through this. Respect to Nana Queer, who is pimping the stupidity of racists for every copper penny. And the Daily Mail is her bottom female dog. And he liked it. He's part of the policing board. What's your, what's your take on this policing board that he's put together? I, I think he also made a comment about my colleague, um, Sean Bailey, mm. not being a proper black man yeah. because he'd said something that was sensible as it happened. Um, the, the 
board has been put there because Louise Casey in her report suggested a board of Londoners was put in. Um, The objection I've got is that it wasn't an independent panel that chose at that board. It was actually, um, it was the uh, deputy mayor for policing and the chief of staff and another one of Sadiq's um, people. Mm. Well, it's all very well. They're supposed to be looking at the way he is in charge of policing. And he's chosen, in effect, the board himself. That's not independent. No. It's also taken the commissioner away from the proper police and crime panel that is in London, that is properly... Um, um, filled with with people that have been elected to go on that board. So that's the issue I've got with it. Well, of course, Sadiq Khan isn't here to defend himself, but Sadiq Khan has insisted that the board is made up of 12 independent people who've been chosen for their expertise. He says that we have a number of experts on this board with extensive experience in a number of fields and some of the country's finest experts. These people uh, with expertise and lived experience will be supporting me in ensuring that the Metropolitan Police Service improves its performance. But also there's extensive scrutiny of the police service to change the systemic and cultural problems there are in the police service and to ensure there is long-lasting permanent change. And that is, uh, obviously, we like to provide balance for that because Sadiq isn't here. But that, that was sort of his intention. What you, moving on to you, Les. Mm-hmm. Now, this was very, very unpopular, and I suspect the reason why um, Sadiq Khan did not do well, or the Labour Party did not do well in Uxbridge. Uh, well, what's your plan on you, Les? You, Les, expansion would be stopped on the first day of mayoralty. It's hitting the poorest the most. Uh, some of the stories that colleagues of mine and myself get are absolutely heartbreaking. People cannot afford to replace their cars. Uh, the scrappage scheme is up to £2,000 per car. Well, you can't buy a compliant car for £2,000. No. And people are having to, if they have to replace their cars, they're having to take on loans for this. In a cost of living crisis, this is absolutely appalling. And he's not listening to what anybody says. A, a London mayor should listen to what Londoners want, and this is not what Londoners want. And, you know, he's, he won't back down on it. Even some of his own Labour colleagues have said, don't do it. But he doesn't care. He, he just does now exactly what he wants. Well, it seems deeply unpopular. You've got the people vandalising the cameras. Obviously, I don't condone any no. violence or criminality. Um, but it's deeply unpopular. And it does seem to be a bit of a money grab, because as long as you can pay £12.50, then the environment is fine. And where it's stretched out to, they don't have a problem with environmental issues no. out there. So it does, it does seem, like near where I live, around sort of North London sort of areas, you drive around there, you suddenly end up in the zone and you start to think to yourself well this is a very leafy part of town well that's right so why is it coming out here well that's right added to the fact people in inner london don't mind it so much because you only have to go to the end of the road and you can get a bus or a train you can't do that in the outskirts of london so people do rely on their cars and i saw that piece on sky the other Mm. morning kemi badenoff was completely correct Poor people do own cars because they, do. they often do shift work, which is, you know, unpopular. They go into London late at night or, you know, through the, through the night, some carers, etc. They rely on their car and they have to have a car because there isn't public transport. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? It's yeah. almost as though he hasn't thought about the transport structures outside central that's London because, right. of course, they're not as frequent and they're no. not as easy. And then as you go into further parts of this country, so spreading out into the other parts, mm. uh, it, 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 this transport structure isn't good at all. Well, Sadiq Khan, of course, isn't here to defend himself. But uh, this is what he said about you, Les, when he spoke to our political editor, Christopher Hope. The decision to expand uh, the ultra emission zone to all of London was a difficult one. It wasn't an easy one, but I think it's a vital decision, and it's the right one. Let me tell you why. Uh, we now know the evidence in relation to the consequences of air pollution, at least to around 4,000 premature deaths a year, at least to children having stunted lungs forever, adults with a whole host of health issues from asthma to cancer, dementia to heart disease. We also now know that one of the most effective ways to reduce air pollution is with the ULS. How do we know that? In central London, we've seen a reduction of around 50% of toxicity, mm. uh, nitrogen dioxide. 
Well, OK, so uh, that, that's what he has to say about Do you know, that makes me so mad to see that because TfL, Transport for London's own impact assessment, said the extended ULEs would make virtually no difference whatsoever. And he knows that. There's other ways of doing this. You got it right when you said earlier it's about money. £200 million they reckon they're going to make out of this wow. a, a year off the back of the poorest of Londoners. That's not good enough. A mayor shouldn't do that. And the things that he was just saying there are simply incorrect. Well, listen, and I've got to come back to the Conservative Party conference. You're not going to be speaking at it, is that right? Or yes, you... but that's fine. To be honest with you, I want to be talking to Londoners. Yeah. Londoners are the ones that vote. And if they don't vote for me, we will end up with Sadiq Khan back in again. And I haven't met anybody that thinks that that's a good idea. We need to get our police out of special measures. We need to get the London's roads moving again. They're all coming to a grinding halt at the moment. And we need to build more houses so that youngsters have got places to go and places that they can rent properly. Uh, that's what we need. And we need me as mayor, quite frankly. Frankly, I think you're right, Suzanne Hall. Thank you very much for joining me. It's such a pleasure to get you in the studio and actually hear you speak. So there you go. That's Suzanne Hall. She's the um, potential mayoral candidate for the Conservatives. She could be mayor. Can she unseat Sadiq Khan?